So let's look at a couple more problems for the graphs of exponential growth. And in this problem, we need to choose the graph from the equation. So it's the opposite of the problem in the introduction video. And the general approach when given an equation or when given a function is to make a table and see if it matches up with any of these graphs here. So we have that f of x, let's just rewrite it. f of x is equal to two multiplied by six to the x power. And if we make a quick table, so we're just gonna plug in different x values and see what the function values look like. So let's start with zero. And we have two times six to the zero power, but we know anything to the zero power is just one, so this would just be two. So our graph has to go through the point zero comma two. And honestly, looking at these graphs, this could be answered now, but let's keep going just to get some practice. If we plug in X is equal to one. We get two multiplied by six to the first power or two times six, which is 12. If we plug in two, we get two times six squared. So that's two times 36, which is 72. And so you can see, going from one value to the next, as we're increasing x by one, the function value is multiplied by six. So remember six, that's the base of our exponential expression and the number out front multiplied by the exponential expression here, the number raised to the variable power, this is our starting value. Since remember the general equation for these, g of x, is a multiplied by b to the x, where a is that starting value and b here is the base or either the growth rate or the decay rate of your exponential function. And if you want, you're not just limited to positive values, you could also plug in a negative value, but a lot of times these become fractions, so it's difficult to find those points on the graph. But if we plug in negative one, just to get extra practice, we'd have two, times six to the minus one. So that means we're dividing by six once. So we have two times a sixth or two divided by six, which is one third. Now, once you have a couple points, we can start looking at the graphs and see what actually makes sense. So let me just scroll down a bit here to see if we can get that last graph onto the page. And let's start with this point zero comma two. So we know it goes through zero two. We also know it goes through one comma 12. But honestly, we'll just need that first value. Since looking at our graphs here, this goes through at zero six. So that's not right. But this one here does go through zero two. So that's a possible choice. Also notice it goes through at one comma 12. So this one makes sense. This matches up with what we have, but we want to double check by looking at B here. And you can see that B looks like that goes through the origin at zero, zero. It does go through 112, so that one made sense, but it should go through at zero comma two, not at the origin. So B can be eliminated as well. So a lot of times you really just need one of these points and finding, finding that starting value is a good place to start when you wanna move quickly through these problems but you should find multiple points just so that you can double check and make sure to eliminate the other choices. So let's move on, we'll do one more problem. And in this problem, we're again given the graph of our function and we need to determine what its equation would be. So let's rewrite our general equation. So y is equal to a multiplied by b to the x where we know that a is when x equals zero. So when x is zero, y would just be a, since we'd have b to the zero, which is just one, and one times a is just a. And then we also know that b, that is our base, or it is our growth or decay rate, where we can say our decay or growth factor, but we'll go with rate in this case. And we essentially just need to pick a couple points on the graph and then figure out our a value, our starting value, and whatever our base is. So let's look at the points where x is equal to zero and when x is equal to one. 
So it looks like when x is 0, the y value is 3. So that's our starting value. That's essentially our a value here. So that's going to eliminate choice a since that has a starting value of 2. If you plug in 0 here, then y would just be equal to 2, and you don't get that here. But in both of these, it does look like when you plug in 0, you would get back 3. So we've narrowed it down to 2, but we need one more point on the graph, and it looks like it goes through at 1, 6. So we can also figure out our base. Essentially, what are we multiplying by to go from one integer x value to the next? And it looks like as we increase x by 1, that we are multiplying by 2 here. So it looks like our base should be 2. And with this one, we could look at a third point. So 2, comma 12 up here. And again, as we increase that x value by 1, so we're just looking at integer x values for simplicity. If we increase that x value by 1, again, notice that we're multiplying by 2. Our y values are doubling. So it looks like our base is 2 in this case. So what we found out is that a is equal to 3. That's our starting value. And our base, our growth rate for this exponential function, is 2. So our equation should be y is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 to the x power. And, of course, you can test that by just plugging in values. Since if you plug in 0, you do get 3. If you plug in 1, 3 times 2 is 6. So that one works. And if you plug in 2, you get 3 times 2 squared, or 3 times 4, which is 12, which matches up with this point. So choice letter B wouldn't be correct because it has the wrong base here. This has a base of 3. It would be multiplying by 3 every time, so this would go through 1, 9, 2, 27. So that just leaves us with one choice, and it is the equation that we determine by comparing it to this general formula here.